There are a lot of proxy products available to you through the Bright Data interface, so let's take a look at each one and how to set them up. We'll go ahead and start with the easiest and probably the most common, and that is the data center proxy. This is going to be the most generic, the most affordable, and probably the most popular proxy product. That's because it's really easy to set up and gives you access to over 1.6 million IPs from various different countries from all around the globe. Set one up, all you have to do is give it a proxy name and choose which IP type you want. So the first one is shared paper usage, which gives you a cost of 60 cents per gigabyte. Shared paper IP lets you choose how many IPs you want and gives you a cost associated with each IP. And if you want a dedicated solution with dedicated domains, simply click dedicated and you are allowed to select which domains you'd like the dedicated IPs for. Once you do that, add proxy and you are good to go. Once it's created, you will be brought to the access parameter screen, which will allow you to adjust things like passwords, allowed IPs, allowed hosts, and rate limits. And over here on the side, you are given a test curl command to test your proxy. To test it out, I'm going into my command prompt, pasting this, and all that's going to do is return the IP address and the country that my proxy is going through. And you can see if I run it multiple times, I am given a different IP address every time with a new country. Next, we're gonna take a look at ISP proxies, which is similar to the data center proxy, except that these are going to be from commonly used ISPs to simulate residential IP addresses. The settings are going to be exactly the same. Simply select the proxy name and then choose your IP type, which will again have a different cost associated with each one. Again, you're brought to the access parameter screen and we can test out this one just like we tested out the previous. And as you can see, we are given a similar result back, except this time it mimics an IP that is more associated with a residential IP address. Now, if you want actual residential IPs from real users, you're gonna to wanna to set up a residential proxy. This one's a little bit different. You still have to select a proxy name, but you only have two IP types, one being shared and the other being dedicated. So dedicated, like it sounds, has dedicated IP addresses that have a cost associated with each one, or you can use shared, which means you have access to all the IPs, but you pay per usage. And then down here in geolocation targeting will determine how you want your IPs to be provisioned by country, state, city, even down to zip code. And selecting multiple will go up on your price, so keep that in mind. Then we'll go ahead and add proxy and we will be given this note. This is telling us that we have to request activation of the residential proxy network. And there are two options here. You can have immediate access to over 240 websites or you can get full access, but that requires you to do customer verification, which can take up to two days. Once you do that, you will be brought to a page that will allow you to download the certificate that will be used to access the residential proxy network. And depending on your operating system, you will follow the instructions listed here to download it and install it on your system. And if you wanna continue without a certificate, you can still test it out using the coding examples that are provided. And if you want to get more granular than residential proxies and use strictly mobile devices, then the mobile proxy is for you. And the settings are going to be exactly like residential. Pick a proxy name, choose if you want shared or dedicated, and then your geolocation targeting. Activation is also required for this one, so you'll have to proceed through the steps that we saw before. Now let's move on to some of the integrated tools like the scraping browser. The scraping browser is really cool in that it mimics an actual web page that can get to your data even if it's behind a captcha. So it's really easy to set up. All you have to do is give it a name and click add proxy. From here, you can check out some of the code and integration examples. Right now, you can choose between Node.js and Python. And then assuming you have Node.js and NPM installed, you can go ahead and install the Puppeteer core package. And then from there, use the code that is generated below into a JavaScript file and then you can run it with node and then the name of your file. That's gonna to navigate to the web page that you had listed in the example and then spit out the HTML of the actual page. And you can see here, all that did was return the IP address and the country that we are accessing it from. Pretty cool stuff and extremely customizable to your use case. Basically, you'll wanna use the scraping browser if you wanna simulate a real world user that has to get data from a web page that requires real world interactions. Next, we're gonna take a look at the web unlocker, which is similar to the scraping browser in that it pulls data from a website, except 
The web unlocker is a bit more simplistic in that it's made for one hit websites that don't require interaction. The settings are pretty streamlined. You'll see the monthly cost associated with the default configuration over here, or you can enable the premium domains, which gives you access to all of these premium domains. Then down at the bottom, you have geolocation targeting, which is where you will select your target locations, whether that's by country, city, state, or ASN. Once this is created, you'll be brought to the access parameters page where you can modify all of the access options. And you're also given a simple curl command to test this out. And as you can see, this is much more simple than the web scraper in that you don't have to use Puppeteer or Node.js, but you can go into checkout code and integration examples and if you want, there are all different types of ways to integrate it using the API, browser, or mobile, and then different languages from Perl, PHP if you want to use it, Python, Ruby, C Sharp, Java, Node.js, a whole bunch of different options. They also have a list of different coding examples depending on how you want to actually integrate this into your code. Really easy to use, really easy to follow. And last but not least, we're going to take a look at the SERP API, which allows us to pull back search results from all kinds of different search engines. SERP API is really easy to set up. Simply give it a name. If you want to allow hotel requests and select your ads mode, then you'll go ahead and add it. Now, just like most of the others, you are given a coding example over here. But one cool thing about the SERP API is that there is a playground you can use. And here you can test out what it would be like to use the SERP API, but with a more friendly user interface. So what we're going to do is do a Google search for fun things to do. Then down here, you have different options from localization, search type, pagination, geolocation, and device. So for example, maybe I want to see what's fun to do in... Hawaii and click search. And here you can see not only are we given the actual page that was returned, but all of the results are packaged up for us nice and neat in a JSON file over here. So changing it up a bit, maybe we want to see uh, what's fun to do in Hokkaido, Japan, and maybe we want to see what it would be like from a mobile device. Obviously, the web page is going to look slightly different and uh, <laughs> Obviously, the web page is going to look different, and you can clearly see that it is searching for fun things to do in Hokkaido. And if you look over here, it'll even tell you what device you're using, Mozilla in an iPhone. Interesting choice, but mobile nonetheless. And the cool thing about the playground is if this is a result you want to use, you can generate the API code to use in your code base. This will give you the exact code you need to use to simulate the request you just used in the playground. Really cool stuff. If you want to try out any of these, then simply sign up with a credit card and you're given a free $5 credit to do whatever you want with any of these services listed here.